Okay. Is that okay? Okay. You don't need that much food? Oh. And it's Pacifico. Uh, this is the last part of our South America trip. Don Valparaiso, or Blake has at least, did Patagonia and we're here. So it's cool, I'm racing again. And this time I've got Blake with me, plus Tom and Ben behind the cameras, they've never been here before. So it's really exciting to share it with them, show them what goes on. Can't wait to get riding. This is day zero, so the camp's been set up. It's in the final touches to my bike. Some sweet socks. These Pacifico t shirt. This is cool. That is Iago Gray's thing. Died, bro. Do you even drift, bro? Frame protection kit. Sun hat. What's that? Like a mini towel. Stickers. Those are bits in here. Four uh, tire plugs. The brace plate, number 11. Got the old Union Jack on there. So, zip ties with bolt holes. So, you stick the zip tie around your bar and then you bolt your number plate to the zip ties. Cost me like two quid for 50 of them off eBay. So that's saying 3,473 meters. It's very high for a man from Shrewsbury. And you just feel like throttles, like hiking up there, feels like you're sort of, I don't know, 60% of what you normally are. But it's a beautiful place. Uh, I don't feel as nervous. I remember feeling really nervous first time being up here. And it's this proper anti-grip, the very first corners are really hard. Oh, yeah, Neil. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I had a big crash then. Yeah. Didn't expect it. And just washed the front wheel top of like a gnarly bit. Yeah, it's a big one. That's pretty bummed to be honest. And I got back on and then just hit another massive sand pile and got bucks right and sort of ball rode off the trail for like 10 seconds to hike back up. It is slippery, you, it's unpredictable, every corner. You're right. Ah, oh, it's hurting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember the bottom half of that track where it goes super steep and really techy. By the time I got there, my hands were just 
solid. Like, I'm not arm pump for a long time. I'm not really trapped like that for a long time. You know, I could feel my hands almost rattling on the bars. The grip had gone. So it was difficult to ride that last bit, but it was epic. But I was grumpy as f after that first run. <laughs> it's all right though. <laughs> I love the back brake. Actually, these have been a while. I should have changed them before I came out, but they are pretty finished. So I'm doing some maintenance because I do want to stop. Day one of five done, Blake. Your first ever proper enduro sort of trans style race. We yeah. are. How'd it go? Good. Uh, blown away, actually. Speechless because I didn't know what to expect. It's flat out. You're going from 3,000 and something meters. 3,630. There you go. And like my heart rate was at some ridiculous amount, just chilling up there. And then racing down was something else. Something Day else. one of five. Yeah. 13,000 meters in total descending. I feel sore, it's day one, I feel very sore. You did take a tumble and it's swollen and all right. Yeah, shame, yeah. But it's all right, it's good. It's good, we're gonna have some food. Then we've got day two. Apparently there's an hour and a half hiker bike. There is, apparently. Cool atmosphere though, isn't there? Yeah, so good. All so the pros, everyone, well, everyone hangs out, rides together, it's good. But who are the podium contenders at this year's race? The big guns of trans stage racing. We've got Roman Polan, an experienced downhiller who is French national champion, now turning his speed to enduro racing for Santa Cruz bikes. Flo Espinera, the Chilean queen of speed looks super fast on her Trek Slash. Pedro Burns, the Chilean Trek rider, knows this place well. Andy Pacifico has never had a local winner, so will this spur him on? Win Masters, the king of wheelies and a strong all-round rider with plenty of World Cup downhill and EWS experience here for the first time at the Andy Pacifico. Day two, stage one, it's done. Not a massive height, it's only 500 meters, but it's super hot, really hard work. It took over an hour to do that, so. This is a big descent, I remember this one. It's one of the biggest of the race, 1200 meters. Yago, what do you think of this stage? This stage is my least favorite one, unfortunately. <laughs> it's just really long, really technical the whole time. You're just like, oh my God, I just want it to end. I think Cedric split his shit last time I did it down this stage. Oh yeah, yeah. No, if you crash here, there's nothing, nothing soft to crash onto. So they're cactus or like rocks like knives. Yeah. <laughs> Iago's right, there's so many more factors at play here at the Andes Pacifico. This part of the Andes is constantly a battle with you. Spiky bushes that grab your knuckles, rip your gloves and block your sight. The anti-grip, tiny dirt marbles and dust that shifts unpredictably. Baby head rocks, ready to smash your rims and your limbs. Cactus, go offline and you're greeted with a six inch spike. difficult little punchy climbs with slippy in like to get into them. Insane amount. I had to jump off and run one. Uh, same. That was so long I've sort of found my mind wandering. 
I started thinking about cold drinks and <laughs> yeah. swimming in rivers. <laughs> swimming in rivers and a hot, like a cold beer. Oh. It's only stage one, Blake. It's a bit early for a beer. This is, I don't know the guy's name, but it's one of the guys who works on the race and he lives in the caravan there, but this setup is amazing. We've got like beds over there, just chilling out, having some fruit, looking down over Santiago. It's a pretty special spot. We're now going up, well, going up a super long drive, like two and a half hour drive, and then it's sort of big moto stages, really fast ones, big whoops. I think I did 50 mile an hour last time came, and it's really cool. You sort of go up to top and then work your way down in three stages. Day two done, it's been a long day today. We were up at six, it's time now. It's now half seven. Uh, it's been a big day, one big descent started off, super gnarly. And then we're up on the moto stage. We've sort of worked our way down this mountain in three big stages, super fast. I managed to keep it pretty nice and clean today. A few really sketchy sections actually at the bottom of the stage, some big boulders, pretty gnarly. I felt tired when I set off, but sort of got into a rhythm. I actually felt pretty good. So we're now driving about an hour out to camp. So it'll be quite a late one tonight by the time we've had dinner, checked over the bikes. Bike's running well. Rear tires looking very second hand. We've only done two days, three more days to go. to uh, hike your bike. Three hours. Yeah. 3,600 meters though, isn't it? That man right there is Aquan Kagwa. He did. It's uh, nearly 7,000 meters. The highest mountain, I think in South America, maybe it's Latin America. First stage today ended up being really pedally and my legs just felt so empty after that four hour hike, three hour hike in fact. Struggling a bit now, definitely feeling the fatigue of two and a half days racing, but one more stage to go. Uh, apparently this one's all downhill, so that's good news for me. 
5, 4, 3, 2, 1, póngale. I just uh, skin myself. Ah, stupid. Thanks, <sighs> Pedro. It's, it's swelling up. Oh, that's a hematoma. Let's get some ice on that. Yeah. Ah, oh, just don't know. Gnarly straight, exploded. Got away lucky to be fair. It was pretty gnarly, uh, rocky, horrible section. I've most taking most of the force. My thigh, I can feel it swelling up massively already. So I think I need to ice it quick and see how it feels. Soon after this moment, things began to deteriorate. We didn't really appreciate the extent of the injuries to my leg, and I went to bed sort of as normal. Blake had to help me back. But after an hour in bed, lying there, I realized that the pain was just getting too much to take, so I made my way back to the medic tent. The last time we saw Neil was at the end of the trail. Now he's at the end of the road again to hospital. He should be fine though. They're gonna operate on him. Just to drain this hematoma that he's just produced on his left thigh. After an hour and a half of excruciating pain, the tramadol wasn't kicking in and I was left doing breathing exercises to try and take my mind off it. I arrived at the clinic at Universidad Los Andes and at 5am went in for emergency surgery to release the pressure in my leg. Because two days after this, yeah, Neil crashed. He's in the hospital. He's recovering now. But what I'm going to do, the race is not over for him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab his number board and I'm going to carry him like through a number board. I'm going to carry his number board all the way through to the finish line. So he does actually finish. Yeah, I'm going to carry him through, put him on my backpack. I feel, I feel good. I feel tired. That's 
I think that's it. I feel tired. My body's like, come on, man, give me a rest. No body. You're coming through, and we're going to end up on the beach. Then you can have a rest. You can do it, Blake. I believe in you. Hang on a minute, Neil wouldn't want this. <laughs> I got mad. Oh, they didn't even come first. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Experience of a lifetime. Hell yeah, it is. That was a hell of a, hell of a, hell of a journey for a first time racing. That is Andy Specifico. Shame I haven't got Neil with me because it would have been amazing just to put the cherry on the top to have Neil right here, but he is on my backpack, so I did bring him through. If you love this sort of content and you want to see us take part in another event, let us know in the comments down below. If you want to get to know us a little bit more, don't forget to hit the globe to subscribe because you're missing out on some rad stuff. If you want to see Valparaiso Urban Downhill Race, which I took part in a couple of weeks ago, click over there. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up like if you love this sort of content. I'll see you in the next one. See ya! I need a pisco because there's no disco yet. Come on, you got not a mother bear that